Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. We're here in uh, Cadman Plaza with uh, an incredible actress and also a tremendous human being and a mother, Fiona Graham. Welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Hi, Jake. So great to see you in person. It's an honor. Uh, you know, I just wanted to, for you to talk about who, in your mind, was a great leader you worked under and, and, wh and, what, and what were the qualities of leadership that you admire about them that you try to carry over in your own life? Oh, wow, what a question. Um, I had the honor and privilege of, uh, of being um, inspired by a woman called Elizabeth Kemp, who in her own right was a brilliant actress. Mm. Sadly passed a couple of years ago, young, uh, and she ran dream workshops for actors and she was interested in welcoming the shadow side out and oh, exploring oh, I love it. <laughs> leaning into the shadow leaning into the shadow uh. and and then uh, welcoming the shadow to uh, accepting the shadow befriending the shadow and using it as your warrior in all that you create so um, why did that resonate with you uh, because I believe in storytelling that we need to tell every aspect of the human experience and that involves the shadow so in order to uh, tell the story of shadows I think I needed to know and own up to my own in order to do that so Authenticity is a, a quality of leadership that she had, you believe? Absolutely. Right. And you feel like in, in acting in, uh, in general, do we, I mean, you, I don't know, do, do we lean away, I mean, do we not target the shadow? Uh, Depends what culture you're in. Talk about the West. Is that, do we, do we, do, I guess we do repress the shadow, right? We want to make sure that, we want to believe that everything is so happy-go-lucky. In America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe not in, in Europe. Not, not in Europe. Okay. Not in Europe. So it's Swedish different. Swedish storytelling is not that. Danish storytelling is not that. I don't believe British storytelling is that either. I'm really happy. And I, and I think that's really fascinating when we look at film and we look at theater, uh, between the two, what, what, do our, what, do our, what, what do the audiences want to walk away with in those cultures? And I think, and it's all, it's all uh, uh, without judgment, I think in American society they, there's, a, there's a sensorial escapism that's required. Absolutely. And I think in, uh, I think in Northern Europe, I think people expect a more intellectual call to action. <laughs> on they, they want a mirror of something that's happening and uh, they want to then think about what can I do about that. And, and I mean, art is ultimately there's, it's not all very, it's not all perfect. It's not all pretty. I, I mean, I wanted to ask you about uh, the lineage of your, of your, you know, the influences that you had. I mean, were you somebody that, like for me, I, I was in sports broadcasting, so I had some influences there, but now that I do this sort of freeform show that you're hip to, I don't really think there are, I have any influences, you know? I mean, maybe I do subconsciously, but in the lineage of your own practice, who are some cats that you uh, sort of borrowed from, uh, and then, you know, who you hip, who you, who you get off on? Well, I think it's also as we grow, isn't it? It's like that becomes, uh, what's the next, What's, what's my next expansion? Yes. How is that happening? And, and who, who is around that's sort of offering a space for that to happen in? So uh, over the years, I mean, a lot of, I mean, that's why I'm in America because I got really into what is the sensorial side of uh, 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 sensorial. Is that sensation? Do you mean yeah, sensation? Like, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, this, this, the, the sort of more visceral. Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, um, um, Amer America really loves that. They want to cry loud. They want to laugh hard. They want to. Um, they don't want to do it themselves, but they want to see that on the screen and then sort of have that a little bit. In, like the, you go in the movie theaters here for people who are not in America, and it's noisy in the audience. It's silent in the UK. That's fascinating. You, it, it, it's raucous, but not not in a in a in a in a, in a solemn film, though. I mean, they're not, you know. But it, but it, but you're saying that even though those people 
they, it's like a mirror. Like it reflects back to yes. them and they can take out that jovial kind of attitude yes. or even that super sensational attitude out into their life, at least in a fleeting way. That's a little bit of relief. There it is. I dig. It's offering that. That's important. So you just answered that question. That's because I was going to say, I mean, if there's more authenticity in European storytelling and filmmaking, you're he why are you here? You're here to investigate the sensational quality Absolutely, of it. Absolutely, yeah. And how, I mean, that, I, that emotional. So, so it's like that emotional life being right there on, on, on the surface. But of course, in Britain and Northern Europe, we're not doing that at all. We're not interested. It's stiff up a lip. It's keep calm and carry on. It's not that. It's so interesting. I mean, you might. That, this is New York, though. You might find it at a different place in Alabama or, you know, right. rural Georgia. You, that stiff upper lip is a lot more prevalent there. Yeah, yeah. But talk a little bit about, did you, were there old, were there actresses or actors that you, you know, sort of, I, I don't mean to just throw this out there, but, you know, like, like I'm just thinking of, like, Faulty Towers, like John Cleese. Yeah, sure. like Like, those kinds of cats. Like, they were almost, they were so brilliantly classic uh, humor. But for you... You do a lot of different kind of acting, so talk a little bit about some people that you that you. Yeah. To. If well, at all, maybe you carved your own path. I don't know. Well, I, there's, there's never been. Of course, there's many, many, many actors that I watch, uh, uh, and definitely if they're in a movie or if they're in a play, I'll go and see it, regardless of what the story is. But I don't think that I don't think there's ever been. I've never, even as a child, looked at someone and went, "Oh, I got a that's that's." that's the way and an example of that might be um I used to dance a lot yeah and i really loved it and i you know very sort of like classically trained uh but uh and contemporary trained and then i realized that these are other people's their physical expression that's not mine so i'm sort of restricted in what it is in how they want that line to be in the movement and that's not my expression, that's theirs. So I was limited in how much I could be expressing within their vision. Well, hold on, you're talking about a rote dance kind of thing? I so mean, it was just like choreography, let's yeah, say. Yeah, chore yeah, choreographed dance. Yeah, that's frustrating, dance. that's very frustrating. So, so I don't think to get to the, to get to the question, bringing it round to people, there are definitely, there's been lots of people that I've gone, I've gone to Rome and I've gone to Berlin, I've been in London where I've been, I've gone to people that are great teachers and inspire, inspirers of different styles of acting from clowning to Brecht to uh, uh, um, classical to Shakespeare, Stanislavski, what the method, all of that. But there, I don't think there's one, one actor that I go. Totally. But a couple of, uh, maybe there's a couple of names you could throw. I just am curious, because I mean, you know, I, I feel with you, without really having seen you act, that you kind of are completely unique. Well, that's, <laughs> aren't we all? I mean, well, no, I, I, no, I, 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 I think, again, I think this goes back to this, this, the sensational quality where we live, regardless of what we want to say, we live in a conformist society. Right, so yeah. even if you have some individuality, look at these kids playing soccer, yeah. they're fired up. <laughs> You know, I mean, even if even if you want to be yourself, you're pressured into conforming. But I don't think you dig that. You you're not. You don't want to conform. But it's also. But but I also feel there's a responsibility. Yeah. Uh, as an artist, of 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 uh, what the expression, how that's going to be received. That's true. And like as a woman, to younger women, to older women, to or or to people, to humanity, to society. It's important. What is the story, and how am I doing it, and how is that? What how's that going to be perceived? I think that's really, and not from an egoic, like, is it good, is it bad? No, I'm not interested in that at all. Uh, that's someone else's opinion. Whatever's opinion of me is their opinion. I can't, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in change making. In, in what way, how do you want, how, how can you, because I used to come, I came from a house where we would always deal with very macro issues that were really out of our control. Right. And then I kind of realized over time, that you can affect change in your world. Yes. So how do you, what kind of change do you want, what are you honing in on in your world uh, to, if, when you talk about being a change agent? Yeah, well, um, oh, I, I mean, you're a bright light. I mean, I, you know, you're, you, you bring, right now you are, but I mean, you know, like you bring this sort of energy and you know, uh, and your eyes are very light, but um, what <laughs> if, if, I'm very tired. <laughs> I know, two hours. One, one, one thing that you would like to get across. Um, 
currently, currently here. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm all about women in their 40s and 50s and stories about that because and we're, we're slowly starting to see more and more of that thank god in the last five years and we never did and i think it's really important for young women to see what 40 year olds look like on the screen and what 40 year old stories are what they are what are 40 year old issues with uh, maybe, maybe that's being a mother, maybe that's IVF, my, maybe that's, um, oh, I don't know, starting anew, or what? Yeah, it, I, I do. It's, I, I, that we're starting to get a lot of that now, but we're starting to get some of that, not a lot. We're starting to get some of that in America. We get a lot of that in Northern Europe, but we, we're not, and I, and, and I think that's really important for generations coming up. Oh, oh, I, I think, yeah. I mean, like, do you feel like, your own path is, is you have a story you have your own story to tell within that no oh, no i don't think so you want to actually draw the stories out of like i mean yeah in, in your ideal you would want to be the person who's extracting the content yeah 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 I, I, uh it's it's not about me i love it so when uh, did you learn that lesson because you know like even today like sometimes i'll just be like oh you know <laughs> Why does that person like? And then I'm like, oh, that's my ego getting yeah. involved, right? And like, and, and and I still try, and like even like you know like, and I'm trying to, but it's still there, and yeah. and yet I still have recognized that when I get out of my own way, and just let things come through, that's when I'm at most at peace because it isn't really yeah. about me. There's a lot bigger thing going on. Was there a moment in your life where you realized like, oh, really? The Fiona is just a link in the chain. I'm not that important um and it led to more peace or more creativity yeah. i don't know and it's a lot of work i think it's a lot of i think it's, it's a lot it's of work just, it's eternal <laughs> it's a lot of effort yeah. um but then maybe seemingly less effort there's definitely a turning point isn't there there's if a, you have a do you have any i know you have you you are you have two young children do you have a meditative practice at all or no um actually, i don't i really don't i mean aside from playing playing conga drums. I, I don't have a sedentary bag. <laughs> I, think, well, I, I, I really, really, really love five rhythms, which is a movement meditation. Yeah, I did. You yeah. know it? I did. You know yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. That's my, that's my, that's my go-to. I love it because the heart is the drumbeat of the world. Yeah. So that, that's it. I've never been one to sit down and just find space in silence. I can't. But uh, I do find, I do find the utter stillness in five rhythms. I would love to see that. I mean, do your parents, maybe they don't completely understand you, but do they respect you? Totally. Tell me why they respect you. Tell, tell the audience why. Well, because you know, a lot of people, that they go off on, you're, you know, you're on your own path, but a lot of healers and people that I talk to, they left dogmatic households, they left households that, you know, there was a certain way that, they, that life should be led. Right. And they decided, no, I'm gonna do my own thing. And, it fissured the relationship over time, the parents are sort of settling in. Uh, but, I mean, can you just, I mean, have you always been in sync with your parents and why do they respect you? Um, I don't know if we're always in sync because we're human beings and there's always, uh, you know, we're forever. Um, yeah, I'm a Pisces. We're always floating up, uh, upstream against the current. It can be hard sometimes. Sometimes you shoot up, but yeah. But there's never, there, was, there was never anything dogmatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, th they recognized early on. I have an older sibling, an older brother who's very academic. My father is very academic. I'm not. Well, I mean, but you're not <laughs> like that, but you're obviously a, 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 an academic. You're an intellectual cat. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I've never felt intellectual. Um, well, you're not in the ivory tower. No, That's I'm the not. point. You're five rhythms intellectual. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Street scholar. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. Um, but they and love. I appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. But um, they love you, the vibration you bring. I mean, when when they they respect your journey. They knew, they saw it early on. It's like, mom, I think I got, I got I got to go to dance class, or whatever. They were like, okay, we will we will find a way for that to happen. I think they saw it early on. They saw that I didn't want I didn't really go to school. I didn't I didn't get it. Yeah. It, it didn't. The, it, none of it worked for me. And uh, they 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 worried about that. But then they kept up the they they were consistent with 
well, what is it that you is, is gonna is gonna work? I was like, I think I've got to go do some performing arts somewhere, and I've got to get out of this town. I've got to get to London. They were like, okay, so you can do that when you're 18, and not before. And before then, we'll figure out as much ex extracurriculum activities that are gonna and get you through. Get you through. Yeah, right, right. And they, they wanted that. you to get the high school degree. I guess. They wanted you to get through high school. I or? mean, I and I barely got through high school. Wow. I, I didn't walk. I didn't walk out with any grades. I didn't go to university. I haven't been to a college. I don't have anything on paper that would get me <laughs> get me a, any kind of job. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I don't that. have anything. I don't have any. I don't have a high school. I mean, I I, I just stopped going because I didn't see the worth in it. But then, but then. I, I read every book I could. I read every play I could. I read philosophy. Like I read what yeah, I. Yeah, I mean it's clear your brain is on fire. You just were not interested in the. Uh... I don't want to sit at a desk. Right. I, didn't, I just didn't want it. I was itchy. I needed to get up and run. And if I could run around. So anyway, you know, and so I, you know, I educate. I, I'm an immersive learner, and actually my children are immersive learners. Wow. So and I see that, and so, so my parents allowed that, and that they, res they they respect who I am because they they observed it. They celebrated it, me, and as soon as I got to 18, they helped me go. It's like the day, I'm like, right, we're going. We went, and um, they left me there. And uh, now I'm more than sort of like 200 miles away. I'm thousands of miles away. And at no point have they ever put pressure on to say, hey, you wanna, we need you. Right, right. No, they're like, fly, bird, fly, and be free. That's, and that's how I will raise my children too. You'll be okay with them if they're not uh, on the academic track. It's interesting when you're a parent, you know, all of a sudden the academic thing becomes very uh, <laughs> important, you know. Well, it turns out that the, that the older one is brilliant with numbers. Wow. And all I'm right, not. so they, it, may, it, it, may so, not, it may not even be an issue. So, yeah, he might. I mean, whatever, it, whatever, whatever, they, whatever they want, and, and they're strangers, right? They're little, I'm getting to know them. And uh, I, w I will fully support that. How much, uh, like, how hard is it, as honestly as you can, how hard is it right now to be totally consumed with motherhood and not being able to pursue some oh. of your creative, it's, it, I it's mean. It's really hard. Talk, talk, can you talk to other kids? Yeah, I know there's a lot of people yeah. going through it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, I, so I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old and they, um, and I, and I'm, you know, I, I nurse my one-year-old and I will nurse my one-year-old until my one-year-old is two or, or even three when he's ready to stop. My other one finished at two yeah. and he was ready and I'm all good with that. And um, so, but that also means I don't get much sleep or much break away. I don't have any family around me, like if I'm in a different country. So, it, so I am with my children all of the time. And, I, and, uh, and on one hand, that's, you know, I'm, that's great. And on the other hand, I would love to go to a bathroom by myself just once. I would love. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. I, the only time I wash is if I'm in the bath with them. That's that's anyway. So how hard is that to not have a different hat on and be? I haven't read a play for a long time. I don't really get to watch a film yeah. in its whole entirety. I, I don't get to sit with people and often and create a story. I don't have the faculties to create a story because I'm thinking about is their hand soap. It's really mundane in the brain, and it's and it's really hard. Uh, and the most important thing is that I have uh, other mothers, and I say this to all mothers that uh, start with young children: is find your tribe of mothers that you can socialize uh, whilst your children are socializing. Mm. And and have conversations that that do that, that that you can laugh about the challenges, the mundanity, the boredom of reading the same book for a year, then being corrected if I skip a word or I fall asleep whilst I'm reading it, getting nudged, getting hit. I mean, if you if we'd have done this three weeks ago, I was sporting a very big black eye from a, a my one year old. In his crib, I sleep on the floor <laughs> like, by the crib to help him help him sleep. Sure, sure. And his stainless steel water cup, he was holding it. Oh. And he dropped it. And uh, well, we couldn't have done the, the interview. Have, well, it, and that's not sort of like. If, no, but I mean, <laughs> let me like. Uh, 
Some, I would just say... Well, I've had to turn down a lot of projects. I've had to turn down um, auditions. I've had to turn down meetings. I've had to turn down um, events. I had, you know, I had two films that came out and I couldn't really go and do anything with those. And that's, um, and I want to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I feel that sometimes. Like, like how do you, uh, like right now, uh, some people would say, well, why don't you have help from the father? I mean, why, why, why are they not? I mean, my, my, my two daughters, when I was married, I took care of them at, at least more than half the time, you know? Oh, and I do, and he's there, but he can't nurse a baby. So, so right. that sort of like feed on demand schedule, which is every two hours, is very limiting on how to, but of course he does, he's, I mean, he's right, because of what the circumstances we're in since 2020, he's home. Yeah. And that's actually been brilliant because I, so I get to sleep in the mornings because he'll do the breakfast. Okay, so you're not, you, you, I'm yeah. not, I'm not like a, he's there and he's doing a lot, but there is only the two of us. I think in, it takes a village, you hear that expression. And in ordinary circumstances, I think people have parents that, like on a Saturday, you can drop them off for the morning, or maybe you can go out on a date night, or maybe you can, and we don't have that. And you could say, well, maybe I get paid help, right? Maybe I could pay someone. Sure, a lot of people do that, yeah. Come, a, lot yeah. Of, a lot of people do that. But now we've got to take into the circumstances that we've just, I, I have a pandemic baby. Right. Who, who hasn't been around other people because we were indoors or when we were outside with a certainly wasn't he, he hasn't had any socialization with other children until very recently and so warming him which i'm now starting to do warm him up to a babysitter a young brilliant sprightly singer songwriter uh who has some spare time but that's taken time for that separation anxiety now I, now me i'm into attachment and empathy based parenting so they're little. I don't want to just go, there you go. See hey, you I respect. You know, I think over time, Fiona, my only wish for you is that when the time is right and there's a great opportunity and you're conflicted because you feel yeah. guilty about leaving them, that you take the opportunity for yourself because uh, it'll make you a better, stronger parent and and sure. and, and, and mother uh, in general. And I, uh, yeah. and I, you know, I, I know you won't, you're working on a couple hours of sleep, but I really enjoyed <laughs> doing this with you, um, and uh, it was, it's great to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you too, Jake. Really good to sit and talk. The Jake Feinberg Show. We'll see you later.